Um, everybody can see my screen, right? <clears throat> Hello? Yes, madam, we can see. Also. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. Today's my topic is Salesforce trigger best practices. So, uh, here we go. So, these are the best practices we need to follow. Uh, the first one is one trigger per object. Madam, one thing, uh, madam, before that, just close this one, madam, left side one. So that your screen will be below, below close options. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. So the first one is uh, one trigger per object. So uh, a single apex trigger is is all you need for a one particular object. If you develop multiple triggers for a single object, you have no way of controlling the order of execution uh, if those triggers can run in the same context. So if we have more than one uh, uh, tr more than one trigger for object, there will be like which trigger should go first and which trigger should uh, should go next. So there will not be any control on the order of execution. So it will lead to problems. So that's why only one trigger per object is the uh, best practice. The next one is the logicless trigger. So uh, if you write the method in your trigger, those cannot be exposed for the test purpose. Uh, so you also cannot expose the logic to be reused anywhere else in your org. So we need to write the logic in the ha helper class or trigger handler uh, so that um, the uh, lo logic we can reuse it uh, uh, in any other um, uh, coding in our organization and uh, we can uh, also expose it for the test purposes. So uh, writing logic in the uh, handler class is the best practices and not uh, in the trigger class. Then a second one is context specific handler method. So create a context specific handler method uh, in trigger handlers. Then bulkification of code. Bulkifying Apex code refers to the concept of making sure the code properly handles more than one record at a time. So uh, for this, we should uh, always use the uh, collections, either a list, set, and map. So uh, when we are writing the trigger, it's very good practice. And um, uh, we should always try to handle more than one record at a time, uh, unless if we come across some uh, errors. Uh, but uh, mostly we should follow this bulkification. By default, uh, it will be like 200 records per batch uh, we can uh, process in, in this method. So we should try to use the bulkification code by using collections, list of map and set. Okay, then the fifth one is avoid SQL queries or DML statement inside the for loop. So we should never write the SQL queries or the a DML uh, statement inside the for, for loop. Otherwise, the um, record or the loop will uh, run those many times inside the for loop. And uh, we have a governor limit of 150 uh, records per tran transaction. So uh, it might exceed the governor, uh, it will hit the governor limit and the whole of the transaction will fail and roll back. So to avoid this, we have to uh, write the um, uh, the queries or the DML statement outside the for loop. I I'll be showing all this in a, a simple example in the end. Now, uh, the sixth one is using collections, streamlining queries and efficient for loops. It is important to use the Apex collections to effectively query data and store the data in memory. A combination of using collections and streamlining uh, SQL queries can subsequently help writing efficient Apex code and avoid governor limits. Okay, the same thing, uh, we have to use uh, the collection list, a uh, list for uh, to store the query result and then set and map uh, to store the uh, IDs and all uh, for unique IDs. So we should always uh, use the uh, collections where to streamline the queries and uh, affect the use of the loops. Then seventh one is querying large data set. The total number of records that can be written by the SQL queries in a request is 50,000. 
if returning a large set of queries causes you to exceed the heap limit, then the SQL query for the loop must be used instead. So it can process multiple batches of records through the use of in internal calls to query and query more. Okay, so then we can use the SQL query for the loop and uh, sir, what is the explanation for this? I did not get. Yes, madam. Generally, what we can do, we can write SQL query first, get all the records, then we can use that list name in the for loop, right, madam? For loop. Ah, right? okay, that one. But okay. instead of that, writing SQL query outside the for loop, in the direct for loop itself, you can write a SQL query like for loop account acc colon query. You can write to write there itself. That is called for loop uh, query. So if you use like this, it will be a performance. Like it will be good for performance also. You can have it. So writing the for loop in the query itself. Correct, madam. In the for loop itself, you can write a SQL query. Oh, yeah. That's what we are doing, right? For and we are iterating and then bracket and select and query Correct. and the loop. Yeah, okay. That select so, query, we, can, we have to write in the for loop itself. Oh, okay, okay. So the next point is the use of at future appropriately. So uh, this is the at future not notation we have learned in last two classes. So it is critical to write your Apex code to uh, efficiently handle the bulk or many records at a time. Uh, so this is also true for uh, asynchronous Apex method. So those annotated uh, with the at future keyword, the difference between synchronous and asynch uh, asynchronous Apex can be found. So th this is a good practice of using at future method when we handle the records in bulk uh, so and uh, and when we are uh, doing the asynchronous apex uh, it's uh, good practice to use the future method to avoid any uh, errors in uh, the coding <clears throat> then we have uh, we, we the most important is we should uh, avoid hard coding ids so when deploying apex code between the sandbox and the production environment uh, environment uh, or installing force.com uh, app exchange packages, it is essential to avoid the hard, co hard coding IDs in the Apex code. By doing so, if the record IDs change between the env environment, the logic can dynamically uh, identify the proper data to operate ag against and not fail. So we should always avoid hard coding the IDs and we should always use the uh, variable instead. Uh, so that uh, if the values also change, the we can instead of variables, madam, we discuss right custom labels, custom settings, custom metadata. So this these things custom. we can use. Custom labels, you remember that is also you can store the custom labels also. You can store in case if you want to change anything, directly you can change the label, not in the code. Okay, okay. Avoiding hard coding means instead of directly hard coding values in the classes, we have pages anywhere. You can use a custom mm -hmm. labels. That is the one option, or you can use another options like custom settings, custom metadata. There also you can store the some data. You can use it. So in this case, you don't need to do touch existing classes. Any any mm -hmm. code don't need to touch. Just you need to touch in the labels, and that's it. that is configuration, right? So custom label means we are creating our own object of that uh, uh, example of custom labels, sir. You remember when we discussed we are pages? I am giving title. But after deploying production, I, they, I want to change the title, the title, page block title or some thick sections I want to change. So where you have to do change again, madam? In the VF page, again, you have to go to the sandbox, change the title, deploy it. Instead of this, what you can do, you can use a custom labels, right? So if you use a custom label, directly you can change value in the label. Automatically, it will reflect wherever we are using that one. Oh, OK. Mm. Yeah. OK, thank you. So that's the explanation for that. So. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. And a few more best practices for the triggers are there should be only one trigger for each object. Avoid complex logic in the trigger to simplify testing and reuse. This is just the summary, which contains actual execution logic. And then a trigger should be bulkified and able to process up to 200. 200 records is the default value in the bulkification, asynchronous Apex, and execute DML statement using the collections instead of individual records and use collections in SOCPUL, where clause 
uh, to retrieve all the uh, records back in a single query and use the consistent naming convention, including the object name, example, account trigger. So yeah, um, using proper naming convention is also a good practice. Uh, otherwise, it will be very difficult uh, for others to follow. Uh, so uh, what is the code is all about. So now this is also one link. Uh, for more details, you can uh, follow this link. Uh, yeah, that's it about the best practices. Now this is, um, this is handler, no. Yeah, so this is the uh, example of a account trigger. So trigger, I uh, write everything uh, like this, all the events like before insert and uh, after insert or before update after everything. Um, sir, is it a good practice to write like this, uh, uh, like trigger dot is before and um, uh, before triggers first and then after triggers below like this? Yeah, this is also fine, man. This is also good practice. Yeah, like I, I found it very easy when writing, we, we write so many triggers per, in one object, right? So whenever it is before triggered or after triggered, it will automatically take it. We will not miss anything. If we already, we beforehand only, we mention this before triggers and after triggers. So this is a simple account uh, trigger. And I have given the uh, handler and uh, method over here. So this is the account trigger handler. This is a public static void. This is the method used. So here, list and uh, uh, map uh, collections have I uh, have used here. Now, it, the uh, what we are updating the field on the contact the child records here. So uh, see here the for loop and uh, the list and map are outside the for loop. This is I'm following all the best best practices in this. The See, update list is outside the for loop. And I have also bulkified the uh, trigger with uh, collections using list and map set also. So this is basically a trigger. This, was, this trigger was asked to me in an interview. That time I did not know how to write. So it was a parent to child uh, uh, account list of contact to update. Yeah, it, this is mostly a self-explanatory. Yeah, which, fields, which fields were updating, madam? Contact fields or account fields? Uh, contact uh, contact fields, no? Contact of, fields. Yeah, uh, the new mailing street to respective account building street. Okay, when you want to update related object records, which triggers you have to use before triggers or after triggers? Related is after triggers. After triggers, related, yes, related is after triggers. Here, which trigger you have specified in the above line in the sixth present sixth PPT screen? Before or after that is before you are writing. So, whenever you want to do DMLs on its related objects, where we have to do, madam, all the DMLs in the after only. After if you only. want to update same record, which trigger we have to use? Which triggers? Same records is before triggers all always and mm. uh, related uh, records is after trigger always. Mm. Why you have written before update, madam? Maybe they got deleted. I wrote all in a line before insert, before update, after. Uh -huh. We have written everything correct, but yeah. if, if you see line number, right, account trigger handler, that you have, we are putting in a before, before context. So that is not a good practice. Okay, just check once, madam, all these things. But this presentation is good, madam. Okay. okay. But whenever we have to write code, we have to think simple, madam. When we have to use before, when we have to use after. When we have to use before, madam. Before triggers, um, before saving the records into the database, and uh, uh, when we are not using the uh, when we are not uh, uh, using the related records. Like only the object itself. I am not expecting this answer, madam. Validation yeah. and updating same record. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean, hmm, no need to sorry, madam. You have to give answer. Okay, when we'll go for after triggers, madam. Workflow, flows, process builder, and updating the related records, sir. 
like extension of uh, all these automation tools are nothing but uh, after request. Yes. So generally, if you want to update related objects records, anything you want to do on the related objects request, you will use the after request. Or you want to send notifications, you will use the after request. Simple, madam, four points only. Two for mm -hmm. before request, two for after request. Okay, Go validation on. and the record itself and uh, workflow extension, uh, process builder extension. Plus extension is nothing but a trigger. And related records. Related. Generally, we can use all, all this once record is saved, right? Okay. So after request also, nothing but after record is saved. You want to perform anything on the related of the request. Okay. Now I'll remember. Never forget it. Yeah. No problem. Good, madam. Your presentation is very good, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you.